away the sin of the world. And he makes us clean and he makes us whole and he gives us a resurrection and the hope for what today means. And so this morning, I just want to invite you guys to come in into this place, not because you must, but because you may. And in doing so, that we realize we are not perfect. But they were broken, and God takes the broken things and he heals them. And so this morning, as we just partake in communion, we'll do that together. So I'm just going to pray a blessing over these elements, and then we'll partake. So if we go from the back to the front, <clears throat> our Heavenly Father, Lord, I just pray, help us to receive what you've done for us, that your, broke, your body was broken and your blood was shed for us so that we may be forgiven and brought into a new life. And so God, we just pray a blessing over these elements. Help us to re be reminded of what they are and what you stand for, Jesus. I just pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. that Jesus was betrayed he took the bread he broke it he gave it to his disciples and he said this is my body which has been broken for you let us partake and in the same way he took the cup he gave it to his disciples and he said this is my blood which is a new and everlasting covenant and whatever you drink it do this in remembrance of me. Let us partake. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. So Don. All right, good morning. Welcome. Oh, welcome to this glorious Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Amen. Welcome in the present here and online. It is Sunday. And it's an amazing Sunday, this Sunday. How many of you guys watched the sunrise today? You did? Wow, okay. I, I have to admit, I was still sleeping. I intended on it, but <clears throat> especially today. We just celebrated communion together and the remembrance of what Good Friday is all about, the works of Jesus through his death and his resurrection, and just being reminded of what the cross is all about. It's about God's love, his forgiveness, his redemption, his restoration, and it was an open invitation to receive those things <clears throat> for all who believe and for his sacrifice. So I'm just going to pray as we open. <clears throat> Excuse me. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, I just pray. I just pray right now. I just ask you to just come fill this place, fill our hearts. God, we just ask that we just open our hearts and our ears for what you have this morning. We thank you that there is a celebration this morning. Help us to have that joyful anticipation and expectation this morning as we just celebrate this Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, in Jesus' name, amen. Matthew 28, one through six. 
says, after the Sabbath, at dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for the angel of the Lord appeared down from heaven and going down to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men, which means they went into a catatonic state. They were frozen. And the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Can you imagine this morning, right? You know that Jesus is dead. You're going to the tomb because you're doing some more preparation. And Mary runs up to the tomb and's like, oh, it's open. It's open. And she probably was a little bit frustrated because it's like all of these things, a wave of emotion and a wave of just thoughts coming to her head. She probably had tears too. And then she maybe wipes them away and then she's probably thinking, they took his body. Somebody stole his body. Right? They murdered him, and now they've taken his body. How quickly maybe her eyes widened, right? Ah! Right? And squinted as she completely shielded them from the bright light of the angel sitting on, there, on the stones. Like, what is going on? Right? And a light gleaming from outside the tomb. And then a pause. And then this. I know you're looking for Jesus. Who was crucified? He is not here. He is risen. Come and see the place where he lay. Come and see. Come and see the empty tomb. Right? Come and see as she's walking where she cries, Rabboni, right? To Rabbi when he's walking beside her. Come and see Mary, mother of James, who collapses at his feet in worship. Come and see Clopas, whose heart burns at the presence of the resurrected Christ. So they get a first glimpse of Jesus in his resurrected form. Come and see Simon who's now renamed Peter, who insists on a death worthy of a savior. He says, right? I shall never betray you, right? Come and see the holes in his hands. Come and see the, the spear, the hole in his side. And he says, Thomas, See these things, so you may see the price that I paid. Come and see that he is the word made flesh. Come and see history change. The flow of time is bent around Jesus in the triumphant ark. Come and see death, that there is no sting. Come and see that you were purchased for a price and to be welcomed home. So piece of trivia for you. Who was the first at the tomb? Piece of trivia, who was first at the tomb? It's not a trick question. It was Mary. Mary had several other women there, right, with her. There were some theological discussions as to how many exactly, but we also know there were three Marys. <laughs> Which Marys, right? But it was Mary Magdalene that came. And Mary said to the disciples, come and see. 
Peter and John were racing to get there, right? John outruns Peter, right? And he got there before Peter, but he stopped at the door. And why did John not enter the tomb first? He was there first. John might have feared it, that upon entering that tomb that he would find Mary Magdalene had been wrong. There was a bit of a shred of doubt, possibly. And instead of finding the empty tomb with all the possibilities that entailed, perhaps he was afraid he would be confronted with the corpse of Christ. But here's Peter. John stands at the door and he's contemplating. Peter's like, stand back, I'm going in because that's Peter. Peter was the first to do a lot of things because he was pretty bold in that way. Peter jumps in there, right? But he was technically the first to enter the tomb. Because Mary, the ladies, Mary were outside the tomb and the angel spoke to them outside. Here's what's beautiful this specific morning with a new dawn. There was darkness. Between Friday and Sunday, there was a sense of darkness. There was a sense of loss. The king was gone. Jesus was dead. And the devil thought he had an upper hand. He thought, that's it, it's over. Woohoo! Right? As the King of Kings was dead, as it was posted on his cross. But something about this morning made it different. Something about this morning made it different. The stone was rolled away. <laughs> and a new dawn brought new light. A resurrection light that morning. You see, that light penetrated the darkness. That particular morning, that light penetrated the darkness. The light illuminating the very tomb. The light illuminating the very emptiness of the tomb. Illuminating that Jesus' body was not there. Just his wraps were there. With a new dawn, he is risen. John eleven twenty five twenty six. You might recall this. This was a foreshadow of already what was to happen. So this is Mary and Martha coming to Jesus after Lazarus is dead. And they said, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing me will never die. And he says to her, do you believe this? You see, Lazarus, right? We know that this is the context of Lazarus. And Jesus waited. Wait, Jesus waited till Lazarus was dead like really dead. Not just sleeping, but he is dead. And you know, Martha, she actually had the faith this time around. She's the one, she knew that Lazarus would go to heaven and be resurrected. She knew where he was going. And there was a common theme here. But she didn't think at this particular moment, three days, right, that Jesus waited and then told him to come out. And then he told him to take off his grave clothes. What a foreshadow. You think the disciples would remember that. Same as our grave clothes, guys. Our old bodies and being resurrected in our new bodies. Right? Because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And I want to break that piece, of, piece down. It says, I am the resurrection and the life. 
This here, it highlights Jesus' authority over death and the promise of eternal life. Nobody takes my life from me. I lay it down and I can bring it up. 1 Corinthians 15, 50 to 58. It says, I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash. In the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will rise imperishable. And we will be changed, for the perishable must close itself with the imperishable and the mortal with, the, with immortality. And when the perishable is enclosed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, stand firm. And let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that in labor the Lord is not in vain. Do you believe this? Because we need to believe in Jesus. Romans 8.11 and if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life over your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Do you believe this? Because he says this in here. Even though they die, from our scripture. That means eternal life beyond death. Jesus assures us that those who believe in him, even if they die physically, will live eternally. Believing brings life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Even though they die. Why? Because he gives us a spirit we cannot see. And the point and it points to the concept of life beyond earthly existence, because we are spirit. 1 Corinthians 15, 20, But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who fall on asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as Adam all die, so in Christ, all will be made alive. Do you believe this? Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. That's a connection to identity, to Christ's identity. That statement there, I am the resurrection and the life, reflects a significant I am statement. It's one of seven recorded in John. And it's a powerful statement, right? Because in the Gospel of John, it reveals Jesus' divine identity. He never told anybody who he was, but he actually says there, I am the resurrection and the life. And he's sharing his identity there. And that identity in Christ is con that concept of beginning a new creation and it's pointing to believers being rooted in Christ that shapes our character and our actions. 1 Corinthians 5, 17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, and the old is gone, and the new is here. 
Do you believe this, church? And then he says this, whoever lives by believing me will never die. That means faith overcomes death. Faith overcomes death. That passage underscores the idea that faith in Jesus has the power to overcome the ultimate consequence of sin, which is death. The wages of sin is death. Spiritual death and a physical death. But Jesus has the power to overcome death. Do you believe this? And here's the beauty. The last part of that statement, it says we'll never die. That's assurance of a future resurrection. That is the assurance of a future resurrection. Jesus assures us, believers, that they will experience a resurrection on the last day, which points to the hope, which is what today is all about. It's about the hope of a future bodily resurrection. It's about the hope and the promise that God gave I want to jump back to 1 Corinthians 15 again. It says, listen, I tell you a mystery. That means we don't have to have it all figured out. It's a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will be all changed. In a flash, the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable. And we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable. We must be clothed in the Spirit. Because Jesus pours His Spirit in us. We must be clothed in the imperishable. And the mortal with the immortality. Do you believe this? So let's jump back to our main verse here. How do we get there? How do we get there? Through Jesus. Jesus says to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live. Even though they die, and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? That comes back to our original question. The real question that's still at the end of this passage, do you believe this? Is the real question for us to have to answer on this Resurrection Sunday. Do you believe this? See, the empty tomb really compels us to make a choice. Don, you want to put something up there just for some music? You see, the pharisaical leaders at that time made excuses and even a false testimony because they were afraid. In Hosea 6, 1, 3, This is, obe- this is Israel's disobedience and their wavering back in this. It says this, come let us return to the Lord. He's torn us to pieces, but he'll heal us. He has injured us, but he will bind up our wounds. And after two days, he will revive us. And on the third day, he will restore us. That we may live in his presence. 
Let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to an acknowledgement of him. As surely as the sun rises, he will appear. He will come to us like winter rains, like the spring rains that water the earth. You see, after Easter, this Resurrection Sunday, after our encounter with the risen King, after being equipped for our life journey as his witnesses, we must carry on the message of Jesus, teach others, and be the light in the breaking of darkness. Our assignment is to make sure that everyone has the opportunity to hear, to believe, and receive the message of the gospel of Jesus. Come and see. Come and see. Go quickly and spread the news. Tell them to come and see that he is risen. He is risen. Because through Jesus, the night, or the, the moment that he said it is finished, the veil tore top to bottom, not bottom to top, from top to bottom. That means that you can come into the Holy of Holies with no restraint through Jesus Christ. That you have full access, that's what that means. We have access to God himself. And in fact, God himself wants us Oh, there's my scripture. He loves us that much that he went so far as to send Jesus to face our death. Today, the amazing day, the joy of today. Today, because of Jesus, we have certainty that our sins have been paid for and that we have eternal life. Do you believe this? Today, because of Jesus, we can leave, live free from condemnation and fear. Do you believe this? And today, because of Jesus, we can pray and know that he is near and he hears us. Do you believe this? Today, he wants a deeper relationship with you. He wants intimacy with you. Do you believe this? Because he says, do you believe this? Come and see. Come and see and taste that the Lord is good. We praise Jesus. Praise you, Jesus, for dying the death that we deserved so that we can have that relationship with our everlasting God. And just as the stone, the stone was rolled away, bringing light into the dark, into that dark tomb, God removed everything standing between us and his love. Amen. See, if the tomb could not hold Christ, then nothing stands in our way. Amen. Mark 16, 4, it says, But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. Nothing can separate us from God's love. Neither death, no principalities, nor any of those things. Nothing can separate us from his love. I don't know about you, but there's peace in this promise. There is joy in this promise. 
I've been with people that have walked with the Lord on their last days. And there's something different about them. There is a peace and there is a joy before they go home. Which is not what you generally see. <laughs> you see panic and fear. But when you look at that and it's and then I believe that they have an encounter with Jesus before that. And when they go home, there's an excitement and it's a celebration. And until that day, we live in each day as a new dawn. And we just remember that each day is a new dawn. Easter isn't just today, it's every day. Do you believe this? Because it is. Jesus brings us new life every day because we're being transformed into his image if we let him. So I'm just going to close in prayer. Father, I just thank you. I thank you for Jesus, that you've taken us from death to life and that you've stripped off the stench, my stench of my grave clothes, our stench of our grave clothes, that you give us a new life, a new day, a new dawn this Resurrection Sunday. Thank you for this amazing day. Help us not to forget it as our hope and your promise. Thank you, Jesus, for showing us what is possible when we truly rely on your power. And you promised us that we would even do greater things. Because the impossibilities are possibilities for you. You are the resurrection and the life. I pray for us to be able to see those that we can say, come and see, come and see. And this morning, if you're not following Jesus, I want to invite you to come and see for yourself. Come and see that the tomb is empty. And the power of resurrection is real and it's true. Because he can resurrect your life. He can resurrect all of those things that hold you back. Maybe today you feel dirty. <laughs> Sitting in darkness. Maybe even awaiting, looking, searching for something. Jesus is calling you. And he says... On Good Friday, it is finished, which means sin and death are no more. He's finished it for you. I just ask you to hear his voice. And if that's you today, he's been tugging at you, and you don't have that relationship, I just pray for you to surrender right now and come to the light. Because it's a new dawn for you. You want a new dawn day. And if that's you, just raise your hand and just repeat it me in your heart. Or even aloud. Jesus, I surrender to you. I ask that you take the filth of my sin and take me from this place of death to a place of resurrection in you. I repent of my sin and my past and I just lay it at your feet. I accept you as my Lord, my Savior, and I believe in your death and your resurrection. And I thank you for calling me out of my grave today. Because I'm a new person through your son, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for crying with me in my pain and my grief and my sorrow. And so, Father, I surrender my life into your hands. And I accept that impossibilities are possibilities for you.
because you are the resurrection and the life. Let's pray that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.